a bit about your, your hospital stay. Um, what happened in hospital? What type of operation did you have to undergo? Tell us a bit more about that. Um, I'm, not, I'm not entirely sure about what, what the operation was called. I know I had surgery on my, on my right leg. Um, and I obviously had to stitch up the left side. So the shark's tooth, I wouldn't even notice the cuts on my left side until we got to the, the ambulance actually, because everything was sort of focused on this right side here. And when they wrapped this side up with blankets and everything. So um, what happened on the right side here is that they had to file the bone and just file it back so that they can actually pull the skin and the muscle over, over the open stump and close it up. So my scar and the stitches that are underneath my leg. So what they did was they pulled the skin over and stretched it over my stump and just sewed it up. And then on the same on the left side, the shark tooth went into my kneecap and, and grazed, grazed it a little bit, but also that just needed stitches. Um, but the biggest thing was in ICU was, was infection. And also throughout the whole hospital period was to prevent infection. We had to just make sure, because shark teeth are, are filthy, and, and that's one of the things that always happens is, is the wound gets infected, then they have to amputate higher. So sealing up that, sealing up that wound and closing it up and getting me out of ICU was, was their, their primary concern. Um, so it, they, they stitched me up four weeks ago and, and a few days. And, a few days. Um, and just to make sure that it was completely sealed and that the wound was healing and that there were no openings. Um, it, was, it, was, it was quite a long process, but I've got, a, I've got a beautiful scar now, so I'm, I'm, I'm lucky that I didn't get, get infection and that, that, the doctor, that, the, that the doctors that looked after me, um, they did a really, really beautiful job and I'm, I'm really lucky to, to have gotten them because the doctor that worked on my stump, he was on call. Just, it just so happened and he's a really, really good friend now, so um, yeah, I'm, I'm very, very lucky. How are you feeling, Caleb? This was so recent. Are you, are you still in pain? Um, I, I, w I don't have a lot of pain. I have ghost pain, which is phantom limb pain. I think most people that lose a limb experience it. So I have like pins and needle sensations and cold sensations in my right foot. Um, but, but of course you don't, you don't have your right foot. I don't have my right foot. Right. So I scratch my knee and uh, it's not there. Um, but it's getting better. What's happened is I've started a coning process. So the more you desensitize your stump, the more you, showering's really great. It's really soothing. Um, so I don't have any pain in my left leg. Obviously my left leg, I've lost a lot of muscle and I've, 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 my energy levels aren't exactly what they were a couple of months ago. I've lost about 13 kilograms. Um, but the, the, the main pain is just phantom pain. And you just, once you get over that, once you fall asleep, then I'm so tired, I just sleep for like nine hours and I'm gone. So the pain is very manageable and um, I'm lucky that my body's healing, my body's healing well. Yeah. Now, before this happened, and, and you've gone back to varsity since, you were a drama student, and you yes. mentioned very briefly that while this attack was happening, you were thinking, but I need my leg, I, I'm a drama yes. student, I need it for movements. And as a 20-year-old South African, 20-year-old man, this is quite something to happen to you. But Caleb, as I sit here and speak to you, you're in good spirits, you speak so kindly about the doctors, you joke about the incident. How, how are you coping? I'm, I'm doing really well. Um, I think the main reason being that I've got the support that I have. And um, from the day on the beach to today, I've, that support has just grown. And um, I think that's one of the main things that's, that's kept me going and, and, and motivated me to, to carry on. So for example, um, oh, obviously all the visitors in hospital are, 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 you know, people say, oh, you must be tired of visitors. But it was so special having people come every day to, to visit you and we just sat around, we drank tea in hospital. That was one thing I really enjoyed was my first cup of tea after my operation. Um, but sat around and just to be there together and the cards and, 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 every, and all the messages and the, the love that, that everyone just sent while I was in hospital. Um, we made a little book and you've got all those, those memories. So on the bad days, I just look at that book and I think, no, things aren't that bad. Um, and another thing, for example, my, I was coming, I came home the first day I got home, and my, a friend of mine and some of his friends, they made a YouTube video, and um, they s went to a whole lot of people in, in the village, in, in Prince Albert, where I stay, and just videoed them, and they all chose a word to describe me, and he had music, and he had videoed the town, and 
It was very emotional just watching that, and that's just one example of the kind of support that's there. It, it was, it was, it's really, really amazing. The, the, the Prince Albert, where I come from, they, the, the, the whole community sort of grouped together and um, is with me on this journey, and they've been there every step of the way, and my family as well. If I didn't have such a strong family, and um, such, such, such an amazing support at home, I don't think I'd be doing this well. And also my, my university, um, hitting campuses, is a special place. It's, they're like a family. Um, you're with the same group of people for four years. So they sent a box of goodies to the hospital uh, when they were on the way to Grahamstown Festival. And um, they just gave us such emotional messages and such inspiring messages to just to keep me going. And I've had such a wonderful welcome and I'm back at Varsity with them and they carry my bag and they're there to check up on me. And so the, the reason why I'm doing so well is because the support's there and, and, people, and people care. That's, that's why I'm doing so well. Yeah. I think that was part of the, the extraordinary thing of, of your story. And when I followed it along, I saw that there's a Facebook group that was dedicated to updates on your recovery yes. and this community that used social media to share updates or, or even to send you um, messages of support and love. It's Absolutely. really an extraordinary thing. Yes, and, and how that started was when I was in hospital, a friend of ours said, look, start a Facebook page or some form of social media where people can see, okay, he's doing okay, and things will sort of, you know, that it won't be as, there won't be so much turmoil and, and so much worry for, for me. People can see, okay, he's doing okay, he's in hospital, he's recovering. Um, so it started like that, just my sister started it actually, um, with a photo of me going to ICU, with my thumbs up and everything, you know, going for my operation. And then um, it just grew into this support base and this way to communicate with people all around the world. Um, we've had incredible messages from people that have gone through the same experience as me and also people that just want to talk to you and connect with you. So that's definitely something I want to keep going and just to stay in touch with people and to, when you go through something like this, I think it opens doors to, to other things. and. That's one thing that the Facebook page has created. It's opened doors of communication with some amazing people out there.